Welcome to the Light Walker's Path. Grow your spirit with Rosemary. In this show, Rosemary creates a safe place to nurture your inner light, ask questions, develop new insights, and find your soul's purpose. So please welcome the host of Light Walker's Path, Grow Your Spirit with Rosemary DeTrolio. Hi there, I'm your host, Rosemary Detrolio, and this is the Lightwalker's Path on Bold Brave TV, streaming live in multiple formats. Join me every Tuesday at 10 Eastern to develop these new insights, find out your soul's purpose, and to hear enlightening and inspired guests that I'll have on each week. You can find replays on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many streaming platforms. Today, I have a guest, Ruth Ratliff, vibrational sound therapist, author of The Voice of the Women's Wisdom, and advocate for empowering women through sound and voice located in New Jersey. And I'd like to welcome my guest, Ruth Ratliff. Hi, Ruth. Welcome. Welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, We've been connecting with each other for many years through my business and also through the power of your voice and sound and your wonderful things that you do at your office as well. So I wanted to ask you about sound and why you're so passionate about bringing sound into, into this time right now. Mm. Well, I've always been connected to sound, sound and music uh, have been my life for, uh, well, since I was a little girl. Uh, I'm, I was a professional vocalist, a singer, and a performer for many years. I taught voice for 20 years. Uh, I married my, uh, <laughs> I married uh, my accompanist <laughs> who accompanied my lessons, uh, and he and I had a, a music studio called Gemini Music. Uh, we're a piano voice uh, private studio. He still teaches piano, but I transitioned into sound therapy. I my why about why I got into this is because I'm absolutely convinced that my relationship with my voice, um, learning about how to use my voice, uh, the vibrations of my voice, uh, learning how to share it with others, my relationship with music absolutely helped me move through a series of trauma and tragic losses in my early life. My mom, dad, and brother all passed uh, through tragic circumstances before I turned 30. Uh, and I grew up in an alcoholic family dynamic where basically you, you didn't speak your mind. We were not taught to speak our mind. We weren't taught to, you know, to share our feelings. Uh, we were, my parents certainly did not model uh, healthy behaviors. Uh, and so it became a dynamic where there was a lot of fear of, mm. you know, of Letting speaking out. Yeah. Mm. So you're th- definitely throat chakra issues for oh, sure. Uh, oh, sure. Uh, so, but so I, it's no mistake or no, you know, it, it, we're drawn to that which we need to hear how we need to heal ourselves, right? So I was drawn to singing. Uh, and then through that, um, I just, my husband bought me one, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago, a throat chakra bowl. And that was the beginning of the end. <laughs> I know you've got a whole array of these beautiful crystal bowls and things that make sound. I've experienced your beautiful sound sessions and your, um, your healing modality. And it's really powerful. And it's so relaxing and so beautiful to exp- to feel that the the sound all around you. It, it's really quite a unique experience. Um, I know that years ago when I did a reading for you, it came out in your reading that you were supposed to be doing sound therapy and toning, and that probably must have been, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe ten to fifteen years ago. Easy. And it's so interesting how you are now on the forefront of of this whole array of sound. Very interesting. So um, <clears throat> I know bowls help with grounding, and for my when I do Reiki or healing work, grounding is really important for the body to feel anchored. And I want you to, exp- to explain how you use these bowls to also help people ground their energy and and how that helps. 
Hmm. Um, yeah, for, actually for my own energy <laughs> is good too, um, uh -huh. because you have to be very grounded, you know, in general, but de definitely when you work on clients, uh, that's very important. What I will do is I, I, I work a couple different ways. I, it's my intention always that I think trumps any frequency that I play, but uh, I work one-on-one -on -one where people will lie on a massage table, fully clothed with a blanket over them. And then I have these bowls called Zen bowls that are therapeutically designed to vibrate down into the body, into the tissues of the body. And some of the bigger bowls, what I'll do is I will put them down by the feet and I'll actually play the bowls right on the person's, the client's feet. And then I will bring the energy down. I'll run the, the bowls through, you know, down their legs to ground them. Um, I also um, tell them, too, that they can use their voices to ground themselves mm. as well at home. Uh, what I do for myself is I'll go outside in my backyard. Uh, I have a nice big backyard. Rosemary's like, what, four hours? <laughs> right? Uh, we're out in the beautiful country here. Uh, and uh, I will go out and bare feet. And that's really a wonderful thing to do. But not only will I do that, but I'll shake or I'll do some kind of movement and then do like a, make a very mm -hmm. deep sound okay. and think about sending my energy down to mother earth. And that's yeah. something you can do yourself every morning. It just clears me for the day. I even do it in the shower. You know, because the water, you're actually sending that beautiful frequencies and overtones to the water and, and water goes all around the world. So imagine how you're, you're, you're doing your, your part, right? To raise the vibration That's of, right. of, of the whole world, of all of us and everything. I know in the works of Emoto, um, Dr. Emoto from Japan, you know, he does a lot of, he did a lot of experiments with water crystals and the frequency of water crystals and how they change through vibration and voice. And then he would free, he would take two samples from the same water. He would speak to one or sing to one, and then he would freeze both of them and compare the look of them. And the one that had the power word like love and happiness actually looked different. And I know that you've done, uh, you have a, a short video, which is very, very um, intriguing on how the voice or sound affects um, somatics. And I want you to show that and explain that. We have a few minutes before a break. So I, I would really love you to do to show that and explain what we're seeing. Sure thing, here we go. Yes, this is basically the study of somatics is a study of visible sound vibrations. And there's a machine called the cymoscope that was uh, discovered by a John, Dr. John Stuart Reed some time ago. Basically it's a speaker, drop of water, and camera and it films what happens to a drop of water when it is infused with sound and this is the human voice these patterns recreate the patterns that are found in nature from the spiral of our dna to the spiral of a galaxy The human voice has so many overtones. That is and fascinating. That if you hear, say, uh, you know, when somebody sings or you hear an instrument, you hear one pitch. But depending upon the instrument, like a stringed instrument or a piano or a voice, there are many other overtones over the, the what they call the fundamental. And, uh -huh. uh, and so you're getting this huge complement of all these frequencies with your own voice every time you speak or sing with frequencies, sounds that are custom made for your body. That's beautiful. And so when you think about well, how, how much water are we, right? Mm -hmm. that drop water, hey, what's happening? Sound has the capacity to shift or reform matter. So you're literally getting reorganized from the molecular level, right? And, and even beyond probably the quantum, I'm sure the quantum level, there's so much we don't understand about energy yeah. body and so forth. Yeah. I always think of, you know, when, we're, when I was a child and you're learning how sound travels in these waves, 
So when you have a voice, it's not only you, it's traveling in waves out to out everywhere and it affects all the things in the field of energy. So I, you know, I understand that whole idea about sound traveling and changing the frequencies of what's around it. It also would show you those positive words have such an effect on other people on an energetic level, more than just the words you hear, but, but the intent behind the word and the intent of the tone is very important. I know when I taught children, we were very mindful of your tone of voice with children. You don't want to scream or yell or whatever. It's the soothing tone that affects them in a different way. You could say the same thing two different ways, and it's the tone. So I, I understand that idea. I was also thinking of native people, how they used to sing, sing to the earth and sing to mother nature. And that is, is just, that really showed it. That video really showed the, the change when you are singing, you know, to the earth or singing to each other. Love Absolutely. that. And they're finding too that sound, you know, that's only half true now from what they're understanding that the, the waveform is, yeah. is part of it, but sound actually travels in a holographic bubble. It propagates yes. or, forms or blossoms. So you're like literally surrounding yourself and other people and your thoughts they're finding too are even more powerful that your yeah. silent salt thoughts, your self talk. Yes. And that's why they talk about doing mantra uh, yes. silently. That 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 that's like sort of like the end game, like where you start out doing them audibly, but then you graduate to, mm. to internally, and that's even more powerful because our thoughts are energy, and they yeah. propagate, go out into the you know the field, right? The field of wow. all possibility. Yeah, and I used to funny because I used to go right up prayer. the road. But I was walking and I used to sing to the trees up. up the I, I do that. I talk to the trees as I do my walk. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I took a, a, a class years ago with a man that um, he was just on the forefront of working with trees and he used to hold a tree and feel the vibration. So I took this class with him. He's called the Tree Whisperer and he was at a mega center and I, I took a class with him over here uh, in New Jersey and I actually heard the trees humming. So the trees hum and they have a deep rumbling humming sound. So I thought that was cool. And now I just read about a uh, plant wave. This person invented this gizmo that you put on a plant and you can hear the tones um, that make music from the plants. I'm like, oh, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I may have to purchase that. <laughs> I did get it. I did get it. Yeah. Um, did you? Yeah. Um, we are starting, I think, well, I know I am. You know how you, as a gardener uh, yes. for many years, you just pull out weeds willy nilly and you don't even think yeah. about the energy of the little plant that you're pulling out. You know, you just don't. And now I can hardly pull weeds. I, I pull them, but I tell them I'm sorry. I'm going to send them somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing because we're all starting to get a sense of the sentience of everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. I mean, everything has everything. Everything. You know, you think about, I mean, this, this water bottle, the straw, yeah. the water, it has energy, yeah. everything. This yeah. net has energy. It's yes. all, and it's all, it's not solid, you know, that's even right. though it's solid, it's not. And that's yeah. the, so interesting uh, that sound, how it moves through air, liquid, solids, uh, and it moves through us and it has the capacity to shift us biologically, energetically, and spiritually. I've had a, quite a few experiences with clients, uh, you know, having uh, what they would call metaphysical experiences th from the sound, a sound mm -hmm. event. Yes. Yeah. There's more on that after the break, because I have an interesting story from the last session that we did with the Reiki and the sound together. And uh, after our sponsor break on um, Bold Brave TV, I want you to come back. Everybody will come back and listen because we have interesting conversation about the sound and the power of sound and how it could bring up memories and thoughts with everyone. So let's go to a break and we'll be right back in a, in a few shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> what if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? 
What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Hmm. Welcome back. You're listening to The Lightwalker's Path on Bold Brave TV, and my wonderful guest today is Ruth Ratliff, vibrational sound therapist and we were speaking before the break about the power of sound and um, recently Ruth and I paired up again and in her studio I did Reiki and Ruth did the the, um, singing at the same time and we had a group in and many of them had very transformative interesting experiences so Ruth um, I want you to think about uh, what you've heard from your clients after our session and then I'll reiterate something that a client had said to me after we had worked with them and we've paired up. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically what Rosemary and I were just talking about on the break was that, you know, you we are, we aren't this stuff where we're energetic, we're, you know, the, we're the quality. It, you know, we're, we're part of that field, uh, energy. So when we raise what they call raise our vibration by doing these, uh, these experiences like sound healing and so forth, uh, we're in that altered state and it makes it easier, I think, for us to have these mystical experiences. And, uh, several people have come up to me afterwards or during the session and said that they have seen their family and friends in spirit have appeared to them. Uh, in fact, one gal uh, who um, who had lost her son uh, maybe a year and a half ago uh, uh, through suicide, oh. uh, for, yeah, through uh, for one of the sessions, and uh, and I came to her. I went. I asked. I always ask people. Hey, you know, uh, anybody want to share any experiences? And she immediately bursts into tears and says, oh. "My son. My son came to me. He stood in front of me like he was real, like it was." Oh, beautiful. And he said, Mom, I love you. I'm fine. Don't worry. We'll see each oh. other. Oh, that's that's beautiful. What, what a great experience to, to have oh. that gift of someone coming to you. So yeah. thankful. Oh, I, I was so honored and, and, and blown away <coughs> and so happy for her that she got some, some sense of uh, peace from that, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. I've got a bad cold. No, it's uh, <clears throat> the uh, the experience when we were working together. Um, a couple of people told me they had unique things happen. I remember when I touched one person's head. She told me that she felt Mother Mary walk through me and had my hands on her head, and she felt her whole heart open with pink light. And between the Reiki and the sound, the combination of these two modalities were really powerful for our guests, and many of them, you know, expressed that to to us. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah I, that's. I feel that, that I always had this sense that, that, that because you know 
we're, we're affected by sound on many, many, many levels every a second of every day, right? Uh, and we're literally wired for sound. So sound can be such a, a wonderful um, companion modality for so many of the holistic modalities, I think, for any or any modality for that matter. Uh, I know they're doing it in the hospitals now, and some hospitals yeah. are having uh, sound baths. They're also, um, I know in Europe, they've been doing it for years, way ahead of, uh, way ahead of us in the United States. Uh, with that, but they've been, uh, they've had uh, people, you know, working with bowls on the body in the hospitals for many, oh. many years. So it, yeah. it, it needs healing. It, it, yeah. it helps. And, and I think it, it kind of supercharges, it supercharges the other modality. Like uh, I was working with an acupuncturist too. And you oh. think about the needles of the acupuncture, right? That they yeah. take in like little antenna that pull in the, the metal that pull in the sound, you know, and it's yeah. right into that. And it's supercharging that, uh, that naughty point. So, oh, yeah, I, I, that, that's, that's terrific. I, I know it's, it's such a, a healing modality. They, they started using even Reiki in hospitals, probably in the past, I've heard about it in the past 15 years more, because I've trained a lot of people that work in hospitals. But before that, you know, we are behind Europe, Europe, uh, about 15 or 20 years ago, I channeled that sound, light, and um, vibration are going to be the methods of healing that are coming in the future. And the future hopefully is now that's beginning to infuse the medical community with these other modalities that are very healing to put the body back in the um, frequency of healing rather than illness. So I thought that was um, that was interesting to, um, to know and to see it come to fruition right now. Oh, definitely. And uh, Edgar Cayce, that's what I say in my presentations, Edgar Cayce predicted mm -hmm. that in the 40s. Uh, the, Einstein yeah. is said to have said it as well. Uh, it's pretty, pretty, I mean, there, we use it, we use it to a certain extent uh, in the medical community at this point, but I think the, you know, they're, they're always trying to find out the why, why does this work this way? You know, uh, what, how, what's the mechanism? And we're really not a hundred percent sure yet of the mechanism and i think that's a little off-putting for the scientific community because it's like you know um quantum physics is starting to yeah. obviously delve into that you know go into those areas that are uh, a little um as einstein said spooky action at a distance you know yeah. <laughs> they're, they're not quite sure spooky you know it's it's not yeah. not quite sure yeah. what's going on there <laughs> yeah can you imagine if tesla was alive today he would have explained it very well, you know, because he had it down years ago, too. I know, too, like you think of red laser lights, the hospital's using light, red laser lights. Uh, radio ablation is sound, sound that um, breaks up stones in the body. So they have some of this stuff that's there. Uh, imaging through using the water and sound for the um, MRIs and the um, checking the babies. Those are amazing where you could see the, the child and you know, I've seen those photos, it blows my mind. So they have it to a certain degree, but they're, they're just sticking toe, a toe in right now. So hopefully that'll be it. I, I want to see them use the laser like they do on these sci-fis and check the body, you know, and let you know what it is without cutting into you. That'd be awesome. <laughs> it, yeah, um, no, the tech, I think the technology and the innovation of people, of scientists can go hand in hand. I really do feel that. I there's something to be said. I know there's a lot more coming out now. Uh, a lot of um, people are making these uh, apps uh, for sound healing, you know, uh, to yeah. me as a sound, somebody who does it, works with it and works with clients one-on-one. -on -one, I, I don't know. I guess I'm, I just feel that you're missing out on that connection with the other person, with a, with a, yeah. with another being. Yes. And I feel that that, can be very powerful and and yeah it's great to have those apps and everything i think that that it's all wonderful that all this is coming uh to fruition but there's something about working one-on-one -on -one with a person that i think I, cannot be duplicated yeah i i think it's a very powerful experience when your energy and your energy fields merge so like when i'm working on <clears throat> with a client one-to-one -one and they're in my space they have a physical uh, feeling by the energy that I'm sending out and by the energy they receive. 
So the energetic bodies, they react with each other, just like they do when you're in a crowd and you get like an icky or a good feeling with someone's energy field. And I know that sound <clears throat> and any of these energy things tune up the vibrational pattern around the body. And that in, in fact is the matrix, so to speak, the matrix of energy of us that responds to the matrix of energy with all the things in our field of, of awareness. Uh, yeah. so, you know, that, that's really, uh, really something. And I think if you ever read the book, uh, the holographic universe, I can't remember who wrote it, but it talks about this scientific matrix of energy that is affected by all things. Uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful book. If you haven't picked that one up, you have to look at that one because it does explain what you're, you're talking about with the field. Yeah. The, yeah there, there's, there's so many, you know, like you say, they're dipping their toe in. Um, I, they do know that the brain and the heart both produce an electromagnetic field and oh, it's yeah. the torus field. Like that's oh, like a yeah. black hole shape. Right. And yeah. that comes about five feet from our body. And you're talking about getting an icky feeling or a good yes. feeling. You're literally sharing their, your heart field and um, yeah. heartmath.org is doing amazing work. Uh, on the heart, they're finding the heart is actually the brain of the body. Uh, yes. But, but sound therapy syncs up these two fields. And that's mm -hmm. probably what gets you into that resting brain state, which is heart brain coherence, uh, which that's is a, right. And that that's that that that's why when you feel so good when you you've had uh, a sound session. Yeah, I, I know, too, the upper heart area is the is the link kind of between the, the these two areas and many people that are overthinkers are stuck up here so you've got people that are very uh left brain linear and they have a really hard time dropping down into heart energy to express themselves and to allow it because they're overthinking a lot so like you're saying the sound is a great way to begin to link these two again where they, they should be naturally linked but they they separate you know, by our, our will and our brain and how we function. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yes, it, absolutely. I agree. And uh, what I find fascinating is the location of the throat chakra between and the, the right, the third eye and the crown. Um, and as a, my instrument obviously is my voice. So I do a lot of work with people. That's my, my passion is helping people to uh, find, find their voice, so to speak, uh, with uh, not that singing now, I'm, I'm doing it a little differently. I'm working with, uh, with a person's voice, um, with a more awareness of what's going on in their inner landscape internally. Oh, okay. Connecting to that and then adding, asking the body, what does it want to tell me? And asking if it wants to release the it on the sound, uh, using organic sounding and, and movement, somatic movement. Um, I'll share a super quick story. Uh, it, this was so great for me to experience, but I had um, a number of years ago, I went to a myofascial release therapist and myofascial release event for your listeners. It's similar to massage, only they don't do the, you know, the kneading, they do compression. So the practitioner had been compressing my chest for quite some time. And all of a sudden my whole body started to shake, which is common for that. It's called unwinding because the fascia starts to release. But then a primal yell comes out of my mouth that was completely involuntary. Hmm. Like, it's just like, ah. Like primal scream <laughs> primal scream but but my the fascia my body and its infinite wisdom released whatever trauma or constriction through my voice yeah i i, I completely <laughs> understand that you know after giving birth to a really big kid back in the day you get that primal ah and it releases the energy of of the dis stress in your body so i do understand that and you know as a, a healer too we do hold traumas in the um not only the fascia of the body but in the in the muscle and the cellular level so we're going to come back to that conversation uh after this next break we have a sponsor break coming up this is the light walkers path on bold break tv please stay with us we'll be right back and i'm going to ask uh, ruth some information about her bowls and her book and anything else that she wants to share coming up. Okay. 
Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back. This is The Light Walker's Path, Grow Your Spirit with Rosemary, and my guest, Ruth Ratliff. A vibrational sound therapist and I asked her if she would play one of her crystal bowls so you can experience the sound of it in person it's it's a different experience uh, so we're working with the audio we have you know on on uh, the broadcast but it's a very powerful experience when you're in her presence okay Ruth <laughs> hit it <laughs> hit it literally hit it <laughs> This is a beautiful practitioner bowl that has citrine in the handle, um, and uh, it's a beautiful clear sound. This is a the note is E for those that are curious. on the handle is a is a very clearing stone so i use citrine when i clear the body but you were channeling uh lomi lomi from uh i don't know if that was a guide or who you used to be but oh. that was from hawaii that spirit guide um, oh. and I've, I've been i've experienced listening to her sing during these bowl sessions and she has several spirit guides that'll step in so it's either her guides or her past life energy that she draws back when she does this. So I've experienced it a few times and her voice actually changes and the vibration of the voice changes as she does the, uh, the sessions. It's, it's very um, amazing. What's right. really, see, I have no idea that of any of this, this is so interesting. Everybody has their gifts, right? Mm -hmm. But what I love is people like Rosemary will hear me and they'll say, you're channeling well, you know, like she's saying, yeah. it's like, Oh, Wow. It's, a, <laughs> it's so cool that, that, you know, we're all, I think we, we all have that ability, don't we really? It's just some of us, it's more developed than others, but we all have that ability to open ourselves up. But I think the, for me, working with the sound has um, absolutely uh, expanded me in that regard. 
tremendously. I, uh, I know that you've been uh, journaling and you've been also singing in tongues, which is something that happens when now you're doing your sessions. Um, I know that your wonderful uh, book, The Voice of Women's Wisdom, is a very powerful read. Um, so I want you to tell about why you wrote that and, and kind of the gist of what that book is. Hmm. Yeah, I started out, um, you know, after, before I even got into the sound work. Uh, I just, you know how sometimes in life you, you recreate yourself. You have a feeling that it's time to do something different, right? So I, was, I wanted to empower women and really through that empower myself. Really, that was the bottom. It's all about me, right? We all do these things. <laughs> We all do these things first and foremost to heal ourselves, but then help others through it. And uh, I, I just felt so strongly, as I said earlier, that my my voice was um, the absolute vehicle for me to to move forward in life, to expand in life, to step out, to not hold myself back from being, you know, from going for it, from being all that I could be in this in this density. So. Um, it's really a small little book, but it's about my experience. Um, it talks about cymatics. We go into uh, the science of bioacoustics. It's a lot of it is like the science behind why yeah. sound affects this on so many levels, because I feel like that's important for people yeah. to be more understandable and relatable. Uh, we talk about how power posing, you know, be acting as if there was a study done uh, with uh, uh -huh. Amy, Amy Cuddy about saying that you know uh, fake it till you make it and uh, you know your your posture how you are in your body how you feel in your body uh, can actually change your biochemistry uh, I go into humming and toning um, I talk about primal voice and so forth I talk about the heart the voice of our heart the different voices the voice of our intuition the voice of our heart um, a way of listening compassionate listening, listening to outside sounds, which is a very meditative practice, also listening to the voice inside. And that's what we, uh, what I work with, um, with people more on listening to that inner voice. And uh, just how, how sound, how sound is so far reaching, it's kind of really hard to categorize it, you know, because it, we are sound, voice and vibration. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I love the, the thought of that. Um, I also work with a lot of clients on how to raise their vibration. And I do suggest the humming, the toning, sound sessions, Reiki sessions, walking in nature, all those things that you're bringing out. And there is research behind it. But native people and, and ancient people have known it for years. They've used humming, toning, singing to the earth, uh, talking to plants. You know, we have this, um, I read this book years ago about Baxter. You know how he, again, he put something on a plant and he spoke to the plant. The plant had a reaction to the man's thought and intention. And I read that back in the 70s. Uh, so there's so much information now that's coming to light in a different way based on the science. And your book is wonderful. I carried it in my office. I've sold it. I've read it. It's, it's, a, it's a very good um, basis for why people need sound therapy. Beautiful. Yep. So, and you can, you can find it. It's on your website too, isn't it, Ruth? I think I yes. saw it on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is your yeah. website, Ruth? Just, just mention it so, you know, people can jot it down. Certainly. It's my name, ruthratliff.com. Easy, easy. Perfect. Yes. Um, and you also do your sound sessions on Zoom, correct? I do. Yes. I have uh, definitely done that. Amazingly enough, it does work beautifully through Zoom because um, there's no there's no time and space, right? We're in a quantum world, uh, yeah. and I just did a video on my YouTube channel. Uh, one of my clients, who uh, is one of my virtual clients, did a beautiful testimonial oh. uh, about that and to say how she's you know grew up with a lot of trauma and she's been going to a lot of therapy, doing a lot of EMDR, brain spotting, and so forth. But she said. The sound therapy, uh, the virtual sound therapy kicked her up, kicked her over, kicked her up. It was like the icing on the cake that needed to bring everything together. You know, she had this beautiful foundation of all the traditional therapies, uh, yeah. but that was the thing that really helped. And they say that sound goes into places, gets 
creates these beautiful new neural pathways in your brain that in an easier way, it's almost like, like I said, your brain is, it's like, it's ready to go. It sound, it, it's very profoundly affected by sound. Uh, so that, yes. So that was pretty cool. Um, what was it, a quote I just heard that kind of speaks to that? We are non-local consciousness mm-hmm. outside of the realm of traditional time and space. Oh yeah. And, Absolutely. Yeah, and no, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, Greg Braden um, works with Heart Math a lot, and we just went to a conference in Arizona where he and uh, um, who is the guy? Oh my gosh, can't remember his name now. I can never remember his name. Bruce Lipton, uh, Bruce Lipton. really t- fascinating, uh, brilliant men. But he was the Heart Math was doing research, and they're saying that. The heart, there's evidence to support that the heart actually exists also, our hearts outside of time and space. Oh, yeah. Didn't they say something where the energy of your heart goes out to the far reaches of the universe and it, it becomes part of the collective field? So, you know, it's funny when I'm read, when I'm doing a reading for someone, I read the Akashic Record Field, which is kind of way out there you know, in, in, the, in the realm of the all, it, all that is. Um, but all these thoughts move out and the lower vibration thoughts all get caught in the astral realm, which is the realm closest to the earth where energy gets stuck. So I believe that when you're doing these sound things, you're breaking that pattern of the sound and you're allowing it to filter to a higher vibration. Mm, allowing yeah. your energy yeah. to filter yeah. to the higher vibration too. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's why we have to be careful what we think and what we say and the, the messages we put out to the world and the ones we think to ourselves, right? It, it's all part of it. Yeah, you have to be literally like a warrior with your thoughts and your words. You do. And yeah. I know, and, and the awareness, because we're, we're, we're conditioned. The condition yes. is huge in this density on planet Earth. You know, some people call it a prison planet. You know, we, we're conditioned. Oh. I think that we're we're just not who we are. We're not this these we're not th- these beautiful, um, powerful uh, expressions of source. Yes, we, we are spiritual beings in this container for now, and part of it is the clues for gifts that we have to help the world. I know you said you had the singing voice and you were trained with so- song, but that's not really where your final this is your mission came in. So I was going to ask you, when did you feel this shift from one mission to this, this other mission with your bowls? You said your husband gave you a bowl, which is wink, wink, nudge, nudge, a little coincidence and reminder. But um, when did you feel this powerful pull that this was the next step? Well, I kind of know exactly when it was. It was when I entered perimenopause. Okay. Okay. So I feel like the, uh, the, sh- the physical shift, the energetic shift in my physical body precipitated that definitely. Yeah. And then, uh, as my, my, you know, as a trained singer, um, I, my voice changed through the, through menopause quite a bit. Um, started deeper, to get right? a little deeper, got deeper. I was always a soprano. Uh, the voice got deeper. I got pitchy. I wasn't able to hold, you know, hold tone uh, as well. My I got breathy. Uh, so I didn't sing for like five years because I was so depressed because oh, that was, yeah, that was, yeah. I'd been singing my whole life. I've had seven voice teachers. Not that that's a good thing, but uh, you know, I, that was who, how I defined myself. So it was like a whole reorganizing and redefining of who I thought I was. Yeah. Through, through that transition, through the transition of my yes. voice. Now I'm using my voice in a different way, yeah. right? For healing. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's I'm not trying to put it into a box of, you know, the vocal pedagogy, you know, the scales. And I still do the scales for warm up, but I'm not, I'm not constraining it. I'm allowing it to be intuitive. So I do more intuitive singing. I, I do believe that you wrote that in your blueprint, because if that didn't happen, you would have still been singing and you wouldn't have reached this part of your path, which you came in to do. So there's all there's always reasons. Um, 
after the break, we're going to finish up with a, a last bit of our uh, our chat for today. Uh, but please stay with us because we have interesting conversation coming up on the Light Warcos Path on Bold Brave TV. So we'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back, and thank you for staying with us. This is Bold and Brave TV, The Light Walker's Path. My guest is Ruth Ratliff, vibrational sound therapist. And before the break, we were having a conversation about the power of sound and how it changes you and how Ruth got on her path. And she was just saying that when she went through her change of life, it changed her life. <laughs> and I think it's meant to. You know, we all have these situations where something just derails you temporarily from what you thought you knew or who you thought you were and puts you on this trajectory to move past to a higher vibration of where you need to be next. And I know you said that that had happened for you. Um, so once you started on this new path and you started using your bowls, I know first you heal yourself, right? And then you work with others. So how was the first shift happening for you when you started using these bowls? What was the first shift that you recognized in yourself that allowed you to be able to say, you know, this is amazing. I'm going to use this for my clients. Do you have a moment when that began to happen in your life for you? It was more of a general feeling, honestly, of suspending my disbelief. Okay. Were you more of a left brain person before this? More linear, more, more, no. Uh, but I mean, I think I'm both, you know, in a way. Um, well, I also saw some things that were, you know, shook my ground to being. I, we saw okay. the orbs. Yeah. Okay. We saw okay. The orbs, my husband and I both uh, in 2016. Uh, so that really i think opened me up quite a bit it was basically well okay if i saw that and that's i saw it you know like we have to see seeing is believing yes, yes, yes. shifted my ground of being to be like okay well if that's real then everything else is called into question and that kind of shifted me into opening me up to the unseen yes you know effects of of what you know energy vibration and so forth and uh i think it allowed me after a while i had to process it obviously but then it opened me up to other things and i started to see other things uh like i was in the client working with a client in my studio and i see this thing that looks like a little bright blue neon blue comet come through the wall pass in front of me and 
go out the other wall. And I'm just like, I got tears streaming down my face while I'm working on this client. They don't know what's going on. So I think that, you know, there, once you start breaking down your filters, you know, mm-hmm. your disbelief. Yeah. I think that was a big shift for me because I always doubted. Right. You doubt, kind of doubt yourself, I think, that you could actually see what you're seeing, right? Yeah. And if someone else sees it with you, like you said, you had that experience, that's oh, yeah. really powerful. You're like, you're not the only person seeing this thing. So it must be something, right? It must be something. <laughs> Although my husband and I, I think, were the only ones that saw it on Route 80. Uh, they were two big, four big, giant orange orbs. And one of them was right, you know, by our car, keeping up with us. And uh, Oh, wow. But nobody else. There's all these cars driving by. So that's a whole nother conversation. They saw it. You don't know. Maybe they did. We had experience. My husband and I were driving and we saw this like person. It wasn't really a person. It was a shadow, but it was, you could see it and it was reddish and it walked across the street in front of our car. And my husband's like, did you just see what I just saw? I'm like, yes. Was it a person that walked across, but not really a person? He goes, yes. I said, we both saw it. And I've seen the orbs in, um, there's a church out in, um, I can't think of, it's a, it's a uh, what the heck is it? It's in New Jersey. I, I can't remember where it is, but Mill, Mill, not Millbrook Village, but there's another old place that uh, my friend had gotten married in the church. And we were seeing the orbs float around in that building as well. And those mm-hmm. were spirits that were in there. Uh, and yeah, it was you, known to be haunted. So, yeah. <laughs> you see them in your videos. Sometimes in my videos, I'll see these. Yeah, psh, yeah. Psh, but these were gigantic these are like the size of an suv on wow. orange, like the yeah. sun so it was like something. what what beings but it felt like hi time yeah, to yeah. i'm glad <laughs> you a- see me how are you yes oh. so that yeah, really yeah. precipitated a lot of i think the openness the opening for me of being open to uh a lot of the work that i'm doing and uh how to just the wonder of it the awe of uh, of of all this unfolding you know the the awareness i i love that and i think these things are there to make us open because if you stay closed you will never embark on the healing journey that you want to help other people with so i do believe that that these things happen to kind of kick us in the tush and say hey listen you know it's not just you it's not just all about the here and the now there's so much more that you can help people with so i think that's that's um really a wonderful um experience that you had that brought you to where you are as a healer and a helper um in this uh time Agreed. Um, so if people want to contact you and set up something with you, what's the best way for them to go about it? To go on my website. They can okay. uh, schedule a discovery call with me. They can also schedule anything. Like to, to, at the top, you'll see a schedule a session, and you can take a look at what my offerings are. And if mm-hmm. you need questions or need more information, certainly reach out to me uh, in okay. that, or you can email me or even call me directly. Good. And I, I would be an advocate to say her sessions are awesome. And then uh, in June, Ruth and I are pairing up again in New Jersey at her studio, and we're doing sound and Reiki. So that would be the first Saturday in June. And uh, we only can fit a few guests in there. So if you're interested, once you sign up for either of our mailings and you get the information, don't wait on it. It's a wonderful experience and it's very powerful for you. So Ruth, it's been such a pleasure to talk to you today and to hear your stories and your inspiration and all the things that you do as a healer. And I really appreciate who you are. I love you. You're awesome. So thank you so much for agreeing to do this today. Thank you, Rosemary. The honor and pleasure is mine truly to know you, to have you so close <laughs> down right down the road. And uh, yeah, it's, you've been you've been a wonderful, supportive friend uh, to me and, and Jim. And uh, we so Thanks. appreciate and love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm your host. You've been watching The Light Walker's Path on Bold Brave TV. Thank you for spending this hour. Next week, my guest is Rita Desnoyers Garcia. Uh, she's a wonderful um, helper of females and she is an awesome presenter. So I hope you come back next week at 10 a.m. and view us live or see us later on my website, 
Bull Brave TV. You can see all the podcasts that are already aired. Please join, um, you know, subscribe, comment. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you, Ruth. This has been the Lightwalker's Path. Grow your spirit with Rosemary. Tune in each week at 10 a.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV network and delve into your soul's purpose through enlightening discussions, wisdom, and inspirational conversations.